What's going on guys, I'm Bill and welcome to Bill's How To. Today we're going to be doing a review and comparison between the Milwaukee backpacks. We've got here the job site and the pack out. Let's do this. Alright guys, so let's start off with my job site backpack. I've had this one here for about three years now. I think I paid about $130 for it um, three years ago. This one here is one of the most durable backpacks I've ever owned in my life. Hands down, it is a very tough bag. Three main concerns I would have had with a backpack initially. Number one, the zippers. Number two, the base, especially because I've got that loaded up. And number three, the straps. I need to make sure these are comfortable. I need to make sure that these aren't gonna break. Um, with the zippers, constantly opening and closing. My main concern was that these zippers would get wrecked. Um, I've even got some glue on the zippers and everything works perfect like the day that I bought it. These straps, and especially the ones down along the bottom, they've got the little belt um, adjustable strap section. I've closed this in my car door so many times and it's still alive. I've stepped on it. The bag has very minimal wear and tear. Um, they are very, very heavy duty. I can't ex express, uh, stress that enough. With this bag here, only three reasons or two reasons, sorry, why I've decided to upgrade from this one here over to the Packout is number one, storage. As you can tell, I'm starting to run out of room in my bag. Um, I've got my little drill bit hanging out the side. If I'm to shuffle things around in there, I'm able to close that. However, I need something with a little bit more room. This one here is pretty much maxed out with the amount of um, tools that I can fit in here. Um, so with regards to the weight, it's probably sitting around 15 to 20 kilos now, so it's probably around 40 pounds or so um, worth of weight, so it is extremely durable. The two reasons why I've decided to jump up to the pack out, number one, this one here's got more room. So you can see this one here is a little bit wider than the old job site. And number two, which is the most important, it's part of the pack out range. So as the name suggests, this one here um, is compatible with the pack out uh, storage boxes. If you're not sure what the pack out storage boxes are, they're basically a locking system where you can just stack up all your boxes on top of each other and they all lock on permanently and you can take them off individually. Not only that, this backpack actually clips onto the toolboxes. Now traditionally or usually what I used to do was I'd carry this on my back, I'd take my old school storage box, this one here, and I'd carry that around. This one here occupies one of my arms, so what I want to do is find out a way, or I found a way actually, which is through the pack, uh, pack out system, to be able to free up my arms and clip everything onto the bag. So what I can do now is get my bag, lock that on top of here, that clips into place, and now I can carry my toolboxes around with me on my bag. So now I've got my arms free as I go. So what I've decided to do for today's video is, number one, I'm going to start unpacking this bag here. That way you guys will see exactly what tools I've got in here, how jam-packed everything is. I'm going to transfer those tools over onto this bag, and I'll also run through some of the main features with regards to the new bag and also the old bag. So let's get straight into it, guys, and we'll start unpacking this bag. So let's start off with these side pockets here. I've got a roll of tape in this side. Generally, I don't keep anything in these side pockets. These ones here are very, very short, so I tend to find that when I put things in here, they tend to fall out. Um, even roll of tape, I don't usually put in there, to be honest. Um, it is fairly short. Compared to the new one, nice and deep. You can see I can fit my whole hand in there, so if I was to put some bits or anything in there, I can actually fit my hand and retrieve them. I think these ones here are designed for the attachment boxes um, with the drill bits and attachments like that. They're supposed to be designed to be able to fit in here, so I'm pretty sure you'll find that the box is actually the same size as this pocket here. Um, another thing that I love, we've got the tape measure clip on the side, which this one here unfortunately doesn't have. You'll find um, in a second where I actually store this one here. So let's start off with this side. Now these side pockets are completely empty. This one here's got a little uh, strap on the front that I can pull down like this. And what I've got in here is just some basic tools. We've got here a spline roller. Probably find things that I didn't even know existed or that I had. So some leftover screws. We've got here a sleeve um, attachment. We've got some sockets. Um, these ones here are tube spanners or tube sockets, usually for um, loosening off uh, taps. And this one here is my worst nightmare. Every time I go to look for this tool, um, it's in a new place every time. So we've got here the grinder um, tool to remove the discs. We've got another um, Phillips head attachment in here. And still a couple more sockets and some leftover bits. Now what I like about this one here is the access that I've got for my screwdrivers. So this one here is nice and easy and it actually looks really, really good. 
One of the things I'm worried about is this side here, I'm not sure, to be honest, if this is designed to carry your screwdrivers or to carry pens. The biggest problem I'm gonna have is slotting these screwdrivers in. This one here fits fine. These two little ones that I always carry, um, I'm not too sure how these ones are gonna sit. They're actually fairly loose in there and I don't wanna lose those at all. So we'll see what's gonna happen with these ones here. I've also got my other uh, flathead screwdriver. So that's that front compartment completely taken care of. Up in the top zipper, we've got an old headlamp and also some little Allen keys. So I'll just remove all of this stuff out of here. Now that these front compartments are done, this one here is probably the most important section of this bag. And you'll notice that the zippers run all the way down the front of the bag. People wouldn't actually pick this um, until after buying the bag, but this is extremely convenient. You'll see once I open this all the way up, that front flap just folds completely open and now we've got full access into the bag itself. So this is where I store my tape measure because I don't really have anywhere else to store it. So now I can clip that on the side, done deal. Um, we've got a little prying kind of uh, a screwdriver here. This one here is like a specialty tool. It's got its own purpose, but I pretty much use it for other every other purpose other than what it's designed for. Um, so we've got here my big flathead screwdriver, which shouldn't be too bad. It's got a bit of overhang. I might have to sort that out later on. Um, we've got a little square here. This one here, I like this square because it's adjustable. Not only that, but on the back of it, you'll find that if you can't find your pen or your pencil, it's got a little scribe on the bottom, so we can undo that scribe. Mark my lines without having to look for my pencil or my pen. Um, another thing, we've got some multi-grips here, and we've got some needle nose pliers. Another set of multi-grips. We've got my adjustable spanner. Um, a few chisels. Now I carry a fair few chisels in here. I carry a good set and a bad set. The reason why I carry the bad set is anytime I need to bash out anything, even if it's steel, I'll still do it with the um, old chisels. Now they work pretty well for getting you out of trouble. So I've got my good set and my bad set in here. Once I can pull those out. There we go. So these are the set of chisels that I've got. We've got a standard pair of pliers and a spare wrench. Everybody's best friend, WD-40 with a little nozzle on the tip. I've had somebody ask me, doesn't this go off in your bag as in get pressed? Never. I think that's exactly why. You can't press the trigger unless this is extended out. So that is why. Good question, whoever asked me, even I didn't realize until now, but that explains why I haven't had any WD-40 go in my bag. We've got some um, masonry bits. Another one of the masonry bits, I've got these ones here because they don't fit in that container, so these are my longer masonry bits. Pair of tin snips. We've got here, I think these are the easy outs. So anytime I've got a broken screw and I need to extract it, I can turn straight to these. And I think I've got another set of easy outs, two different designs. I'll show you guys a bit of a close up once we get into this. Wire brush. Spare packet of blades, some Allen key wrenches, another steel wire or steel wire brush. Then we've got our little pocket up on top here. So hopefully you guys can see that. I'll try and zoom in in a little bit and show you guys exactly what's going on. This top section here, I keep all my Sharpies, all my pencils, um, even my electricity tester. And we've got here my um, center punch. So this one here is a self-driving or a self-punching center punch. Um, and this one here works off spring action. So very, very important. Put these on a the side. That pocket's empty now. We've got another pocket down on the bottom here. I've got my little mini screwdriver set in here. Some plumber's tape. Once again, electricity tester. I've got my socket set attachment for my impact driver. And this pocket is now empty. Once again, this is what the packet looks like or the bag looks like on the inside. So now that we've got that, we've got one more compartment up on top here where I keep my level. I've got a little magnetic rubber coated uh, level that I keep up here, spirit level. So this one is unreal. Not only is it magnetic, but it's also rubber coated on the outside. So if you tend to drop this or step on it or anything like that, it's completely protected. 
So that's pretty much it for the inside, apart from a few little um, nozzles and some leftover screws, which I'm gonna have to clean up in a second. We'll move over to the back of the bag. So in the back of the bag here, you'll notice that it doesn't fold down as well as this one here does. Pretty much not at all. You have to force it down. I've got my impact driver, hammer drill, I've got a pry bar, my hammer, and then I've got my three individual little attachment boxes. So we've got here my socket set and a few little bits and pieces that I use for my impact. We've got my drill bit set. Um, this one here is a Dewalt titanium uh, drill bit set. Needs to be replaced because a lot of the bits are now blunt. So I've purchased a new one, which I'll show you guys later on. And I've also got my, um, once again, masonry bits. So these masonry bits are here, designed specifically for my hammer drill. The other ones, which are these ones here, are for the SDS, but I always keep them with me because these ones here will tend to get lost pretty quick, being a small packet package. Um, so that's pretty much it for this bag. You can see now that this bag is nice and empty, uh, fairly light. It's pretty much, it's the same weight as this one here. I'll move all this stuff over to a side. I'll show you guys a quick close up of what I've got here in case you wanted to know and also with regards to this bag. So these are all the bits and pieces that were inside my bag. As you can tell, there is a fair few tools in here and they were all crammed into this one old job site bag. Um, like I said, this bag has held up exceptionally well. You can see here, everything's still in pretty good condition. Very, very little wear and tear on the bag whatsoever. The zippers all work perfect. Everything's working nice. Um, extremely little wear and tear on the sides. This is probably the worst part of it right here. A bit of uh, rub mark on the side. And you can see there the base has just got scratches on the bottom. But apart from that, the base and everything, the whole bag has held up very, very well. So now that I've got this all done, I want to try and shift this over, over onto the uh, new pack out bag. And we'll see how much more room I've got compared to the old job site one. And with all these tools here I always carry these tools around whether I'm doing a quote or I'm actually completing a job and I find that with these tools here plus my storage um, for my little accessories the screws and everything else between those two um, uh, contents the contents of those two um, items I can pretty much get through most of my jobs so probably about 60% or 70% of my repairs will be completed just with those two things alone. So let's get started, we'll shift over to the um, pack out bag and we'll have a quick look and see what's going on with this new bag here. So this is a close up of the new pack out bag, as I said before I'm a little bit concerned with what I'm going to do um, with all my screwdrivers or my pens which I might be sticking here in the front, I'm not too sure yet exactly. Um, so this here is the backpack, we've got an initial zipper on the front. That once again folds all the way down. Somebody else asked in a previous video, uh, video with regards to um, with the job site bag in particular, if it's completely loaded up, does it topple over? So if you've completely loaded up your bag, if you were to push it, it actually doesn't fall. It's very, very stable. And I'm assuming it's gonna be the same thing with this bag here. Um, so we've got a little sleeve down the front here in case you carry a tablet or a laptop or anything like that. It says it's like got a material on there that's non-damaging somewhere along here. Um, I'll just try to find that. So here it says, hard shell protected electronic and equipment pocket. Um, now the issue that I have with this one here, so I know some people, some technicians, or some people might actually carry their um, iPads or their laptops in this bag. The material up the top is no problem. However, as you come down here, Hopefully you guys can see that. You've got the stitching on the back here from where the screwdrivers go into and that will definitely cause some rub marks on your iPad or your um, laptop if it's not in a protective covering. So those, the stitching on the back of here, that's pretty much the only concern I could have with that at the moment. We've got a little pocket down the front, a few little sections on the front to put some more tools. We've got a total of 44 pockets as far as I'm aware. Somewhere here on the description it says 44 pockets. So. We've got there 40, uh, 44, 48 pockets, sorry I, I, was, I shorted them out by 4 pockets, so 48 pockets in total um, and we've got a few zippers up here to be able to put some in, this one has got an excess flap, that's pretty much the whole gist of that little front section, so with the side pockets here, as I said it is fairly wide, so I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get my drill bits into the side of there, we'll just see how we go, if I can do this with one hand.
So they do fit in the side of that little pocket there. Um, I'm not too sure how well the Milwaukee ones are gonna fit in there, but we'll find out shortly. When it comes to the back zipper, with the other bag, the front zipper has pretty much all your heavy duty compartments. So all your main pockets and that are on the front zipper on the, on the old job site bag. On this one here, however, on the pack out, most things are actually in the back. So I'll zip this front up here so it doesn't get in my way. So once I fold down this section here, you can see just how much more room I've got in this section. So we've got a whole stack of pockets. Once again, another zipper compartment here that's clear, which is really important in case you forget what's in there or you need to actually see what's in there before you get it. We've got a whole range of pockets on this side here. So once again, all my pliers and everything like that's gonna be going in there. <coughs> nice solid base on the bottom and it's excessively deep. So I've got both my drills in the bag, even with the long extended um, attachment on here, and we've still got lots of room in that bag. So you can see I've got a lot more room to go. Um, we've got here a, a lanyon on the side to be able to put your rolls of tape or anything else along on the side. When we have a look at the padding on the back, you'll notice the padding here on the straps are like three times the thickness of the old job site one. Now, I don't remember what this one here was like when I first bought it, um, but over the years, obviously, it might have gotten flatter, and this is now pretty thin like a pancake, even though it's still comfortable. This one here is gonna be obviously be a lot more comfortable. Once again, we've got our um, sternum strap, just like we do on the old one right here. So it'll be a very, very nice, interesting, comfortable bag. What I do like, however, is they put a bit more thought into this one here. Um, even with the zippers open, this time around you've got a handle, so you don't have to zip up your bag in order to carry it. You can still carry it with one hand just by grabbing these two straps, even if your zipper is still undone. So you can pick this up and be on your way. Your bag is still open. On the other one, you can't do that. So let's get all this stuff loaded up into this bag and we'll see how well it fits. So I'll just show you guys the pack out organizers that I've got. I've got two of them here. This one, these ones here, the low profiles, so they're very thin. Um, that way I can sit them on the bottom of the, my bag without having to worry too much. So you can see here, they've got little dividers in there that you can organize however you want. I've almost completely set up this top one here. I've still got the bottom one to go. Um, they're very, very sturdy. You even listen to the click. They're solid. Um, very good make. These ones here are a little bit expensive, to be honest. Um, each one was... I think $49 or $50, pretty expensive for an organizer, but um, it is very, very durable. So hopefully I won't go through these, even if I drop it or throw it around with the bottom of my bag. So this is the way I've decided to organize a bag. Rather than putting the screwdrivers on the front, um, they were a bit loose on the front. So I've put in my Sharpies and also my pencils. These are all nice and secure in here. They're not gonna go anywhere. I've got a roll of tape on the side and also my tape measure here. My side pockets are completely empty, so whether I want to put water bottles or more storage um, attachments or anything like that, these are free and vacant now to put something else in there. Um, we'll start off on the front zipper. So front zipper, this part here is like a hard outer shell, so you don't have to worry about damaging anything that's inside. You can see it's a lot more organized, crisp, clean. This section here's got my Allen key. This section here is vacant. We've got nothing in there. Top little zipper. I've got my um, testers. I've got my headlamp and also the one tool that I always lose. That's not going to get away from me next time. Um, I've got a few more um, bits and pieces down here, but it's all sitting nice and clean. So I've got so much more room just in this front compartment. I can load up this bag even more than what I already have. This material here is made out of, uh, I think it's called ballistic material, so it's very, very hard wearing. As you can tell, on a three-year-old bag, it's held up very, very nicely. So this back zipper now, once again, have a look at that. Now, the amount of room that I've got left over in that bag is unreal. My drills, even with my long extension drill bit, is still in there. Um, I don't have to worry about taking this off. My batteries are all on the base as well. Um, and I've got so much more room in here. All my little attachments are sitting on the, um, on the base of the bag. I've got a lot of room. So everything's just sitting in there nicely. Two different chisel sections. Got my pliers all set up. Um, my square, I've got all my spare um, pencils and sharpies my uh, Teflon tape or plumber's tape. I've got a lot more compartments and a lot more space to work with. I mean, even the WD-40 has room to actually roll around now. So I'm pretty impressed with the amount of storage I've got. My tape measure is up here. I found in the old bag, the tape, uh, sorry, not the tape measure, the level um, was sitting a bit tight in the top pocket. Um, the top pocket's in the same spot. This one here has got a lot more room. So it definitely is a wider bag. It's a deeper bag. 
and like I said, I've got a lot more room. So now we've got my tape on the side, both tapes going there. I've got a lot more room in this bag, very, very happy with it so far. So let's close this one here up. And we're ready to go. So there we have it guys, that's the comparison between the two bags. Um, in terms of price, they're both pretty much exactly the same price. I paid about 130 for this one three years ago, and this one here was 139. Um, very, very similar bags. Obviously, the two benefits that I wanted for this, bigger bag so I can fit more stuff in there. Down the bottom, I've got the pack out attachment so that I can now put on my boxes. So this one here is all ready to go. So for me, this is the better option. Um, if you guys are out there, it really comes down to what you need it for. This bag here is absolutely nothing wrong with it and I wouldn't have changed it if it wasn't for the pack out and also the more storage in the bag. So guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If there's anything else I've missed or you've got any other questions, put them in the comment section below. As always, like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Bill. Thanks for watching. Bill's out too.